Hello everyone! Today we begin our journey in northern Italy at the Milan Malpensa Airport. This would be the most likely airport you'd fly in and out of if you were visiting popular Italian vacation destinations like Lake Como and of course Milan. It was a bit of a dreary day as we pulled up to the airport, which matched our mood as we were of course sad to leave the beautiful country of Italy and head back home to the real world. But we were certainly grateful for our time there and stayed in some really amazing places. I'll link a couple of those videos below if you want to check it out. So, let me tell you a little bit about the flight we're taking today. We are going to try out Delta's international business class product, which they call Delta One. Ooh, fancy. Perhaps one of the best things, when it's available, about international business class is the separate check-in lines at the airport that allow you to bypass the mass of people trying to check in. It saves so much time, allows you to get to the airport later, and usually the customer service is top-notch. In my experience, the separate check-in lines are pretty standard for international business class travelers, but what is less common, and I think even better, and is present in the Milan airport, is a separate fast-track security lane included with your ticket. The fast-track lane allows you to bypass the congested passport control and security lanes and gets you to your gate or lounge much quicker. Just look at all the people we got to skip. We are chronically early to the airport, so we decided to check out the lounge that was included with the price of our ticket. They labeled this a quote, premium lounge, but there was really nothing premium about it. It was crowded and the food was honestly so unimpressive that I wouldn't dare subject your eyes to it. You could get into this lounge via priority pass, which I assume is what was responsible for all of the crowding, but interestingly enough, they had this separate smaller room for the business and first class travelers. While not really what you expect in terms of luxury, it was quite a bit quieter than the main lounge and I definitely appreciated the views of the apron with all these wet birds. Whatever the lounge lacked in amenities, it definitely made up for by calling itself the VVIP lounge. How could you not feel special? About 45 minutes before departure, we headed to the gate to get ready to board. They called the Delta One boarding group fairly early, but must have ran into a snag because we ended up having to wait a good bit before boarding. But for you, loyal viewer, it will feel like but a few seconds. We made our way to the front of the line and got our boarding passes and passport scanned by the lovely gate agents. Before boarding, we met this nice couple who turns out just had a relative get married as well. Can you give me that? Are you, the, are you guys got married? We did, yeah. yeah. I saw a bride. I'm like, where'd you guys get married in? Uh, we actually got married in Detroit. And then this is your honeymoon? Yeah. We're on the way back now, yeah. Uh, we got, we, his son got married in Positano. This oh, really? Oh, congratulations. Congratulations to you guys. Oh, thanks. Yeah. You guys just got married? We did, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank awesome. you. You as well. Our flight today would take us from Milan to New York's JFK Airport in about eight hours, traveling a distance of nearly 4,000 miles. Excitement was building as we made our way down the jet bridge to board our 31, yes, 31 year old grandpa of a Boeing 767-300. Delta has got to think about retiring these old birds soon. Fun fact, I've taken 96 flights since I started tracking my flights in 2017, and this is the oldest plane I've flown on in that time. The cabin was set up in a standard 121 configuration with 26 Delta One lie flat beds, 35 Comfort Plus seats in a 232 configuration, and 165 main cabin seats, also in a 232 configuration. No premium select on this particular flight, although Delta does carry this product on some of its other 767-300s. Despite being an old plane and sometimes showing its age, the seat itself looked to have a recent refresh and overall the cabin felt relatively new and comfortable. At your seat, you're provided with some bedding, headphones, and the all-important slippers. Also set on the shelf in between the seats was your Someone Somewhere Delta One amenity kit that Delta had been providing for a few years now. I personally like the packaging of these and they make for good reusable storage bag for small items. You'll recognize many of the amenities inside the kit if you've ever stepped foot inside a Delta Sky Club bathroom. I'm not complaining though, as I've always found the grown Alchemist stuff to smell pretty good and be of high quality. You'll also find standard things for any long haul flight like boom, sleep now, earplugs. There was also a bamboo toothbrush with a toothpaste and pen. All right, time to stretch out and prepare for takeoff. Service began a few minutes after reaching 10,000 feet and started with a nice warm towel followed by warm nuts and a glass of ginger ale. You're allowed to view the menu on the Delta app before you fly if you choose, or if you're feeling old school, you can just take a look at the paper one once you're on the plane. For my starter, I elected to have the butternut squash soup, which was surprisingly amazing and creamy and flavorful and my favorite dish of the whole meal. If you have a gluten allergy, they also have a gluten-free meal available for you, so long as you order in advance. The gluten-free starter on this flight was a salad, a fruit salad, and some shrimps. 
Next up for me was the ricotta and spinach ravioli, which was also really, really good. The main course for the gluten-free meal was a roasted chicken breast and a rice dish, which I'm told was delicious. For dessert, I had the deconstructed cannoli, which was a little disappointing and dry. Nothing like a little glass of wine to wash it down with, though. After dinner, I started to get sleepy on account of my full belly, so I took the time to convert my seat into a bed and get nice and cozy. The bed does lie fully flat, and if you were paying attention two minutes ago, you will remember that you were provided a pillow and a blanket. There was decent enough room in the footwell for my size 12 skis, but as you may be able to see, things got quite a bit narrow as my body got quite a bit wider. Didn't make for the best sleep ever on a plane, but it's really hard to find things to complain about when you aren't forced to sit upright like in an economy. I settled in, watched the masterpiece of this century, the Super Mario Brothers movie, and took a little nap. After getting a good four to five hours of sleep, I woke up and it was time for our pre-arrival meal as we were about 90 minutes out from landing. I opted for the pumpkin, cabbage, and cheese pizza, which as you can probably tell by looking at it, it could have been better. And some, constructed this time, cannolis. The gluten-free pre-arrival meal was bread, fruit, and we honestly can't remember what the other dish was. Leave a comment if you have a guess. A short time later, we were safely on the ground in New York and heading to customs. That's it for me today. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.